Today we're going to continue with our Space Invaders app and learn how to program our bullets behavior from our rocket sprite. So in order to get to our MIT App Inventor or Space Invaders app, we're going to need to go ahead and open up a new tab or window in your browser and go to your App Inventor account. From here you'll log in using your Google student email address, click on create apps, and then click on your Space Invaders project to continue building your app. Now, in order to program the bullet's behavior, there are several features that we want our bullet to have in this game. We want it to shoot from the rocket, we need it to collide with the saucer, and we need it to be invisible after the collision and before the shot. So let's start by using our screen one initialize block. When the screen is initialized, we will program the bullets to be invisible. We do this by setting the bullet's visibility property to false. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we would do this event handler in our Space Invaders app. Once you're into your application, we're going to go ahead and navigate over to our block view. From here, you can see that we've already programmed our when rocket sprite drag event handler. Now it's time to move on to what happens when the screen is initialized. So when that screen is initialized, there's really two things that we want to have occur here. The first thing is going to be our bullet rocket visible. We're going to set that to false. The second thing we're going to do is set the bullet saucer visible to false as well. So in order to do this, we're going to navigate to the left hand side and we're going to find that screen one. From our event handlers, we're going to find our when screen one initialized. And again, our screen one initialize is basically going to set our screen once that app first turns on. So when our app turns on or the screen initializes, we're going to need to go ahead and find our bullet rocket and we're going to go ahead and set that visibility. Now we can go ahead and set the bullet rocket visibility and then from our logic drawer we're going to go ahead and find a false statement. Now that we have the first part completed, we need to go ahead and do the same for our bullet saucer. We can go ahead and right click on our bullet rocket and duplicate that block. From there, we can change the bullet rocket to bullet saucer. Both visibilities will be set to false and now when our screen is initialized, both of those sprites visibility will be set to false. Next, we want to make sure that our bullet appears again when we shoot from the rocket. When we touch the rocket, we want the bullet to start heading towards the saucer. We will do this by using our rocket sprite touched event handler. So when the rocket is touched, we not only want to set the rocket to be visible, but we also want to set the speed and heading of our rocket. The heading is a value from 0 to 360 that indicates what direction the sprite should be moving towards. The value 0 is to the left. 90 is up, 180 is to the right, and 270 is down. Remember that the speed is measured in pixels per second. Let's go back over to our Space Invaders application and program our Rocket Sprite Touched Event Handler. For the first part of this event handler, what we're going to be looking at is setting that rocket's visibility to true. We'll need to set the speed as well as the rocket's heading. So let's go ahead and add our Rocket Sprite Touched Event Handler. So we're going to go over and find our rocket sprite on our left hand side in our blocks and what we're looking for is the touched event handler. Now once we bring that when rocket sprite touched event handler in, the first thing that we need to do is make sure that that bullet rocket is visible. We have already set that to false when the screen initializes, so now it's time to go ahead and make that true. Now we can go ahead and simply take that visibility from up above in our screen one initialize, right click and duplicate that block. Before adding it to the event handler, we're going to need to go ahead and change that visibility from false to true. Go ahead and include that into that rocket sprite touched event handler. Now when that rocket sprite is touched, that bullet becomes visible. The next thing we need to look at is the speed. So in order to change our speed, we're going to go ahead and duplicate that visibility block again, and we're going to go ahead and change the visible over to speed. Now for this, we're going to need to go ahead and include a math block. And remember our speed is included in pixels per second. So we're gonna to go to our math drawer here and we're gonna grab a zero block and we're gonna change that from zero to 30. So our bullet speed will be now traveling at 30 pixels per second. If you wanna increase the difficulty of your app, you could increase the value within this block. The next part of our touched event handler is the heading in which the bullet will travel. So again, we'll go ahead and duplicate that block and we're gonna change our speed over to heading. Now remember that our heading in order to get that bullet to go in an upwards movement is going to be set at 90. So this will ensure that our bullet will travel in that upward direction. 
Go ahead and include that into your touched event handler, and you have now completed the first part of your When Rockets Bright touched event handler. Our next step is to make sure that the bullet rocket will be positioned correctly. We will do this by using our bullet rocket move to event handler. When the rocket is touched, we not only want to fire the bullet, but we also want the bullet to return to the correct location. The X value should be one half the width of the rocket's sprite, and the Y value should be set to minus 20 of the rocket's Y value. So let's head back over to our Space Invaders app and program the move to block. For our bullet rocket move to block, we're going to go ahead and place that within that rocket sprite touched event handler. So we're going to need to go ahead and find that bullet rocket and we'll find a purple block that calls for us to move on the X and Y axis. Now once we have that block, we have to address both the X and the Y value. For our X value, what we're looking to do is take that rocket sprite that is currently on the X value and add that to the rocket sprites width and divide that by two. So there's a couple steps in order to join these blocks together. The first thing we're gonna to need to do is go to our math drawer and we're gonna find a division block. Once you have your division block, we're gonna to need to take the rocket sprites width and divide that by two. So from the rocket sprite, we're gonna scroll down and find the width of that rocket sprite. And then we're gonna go ahead and find a math block, put in the zero block, and then change that to by two. So that's going to take the width and essentially divide that in half. Now the next thing we need to do is grab our addition block. Once you grab that addition block, what we'll need to do is to take this rocket sprite width divided by two and put it in the back half of that addition block. From here we now can go ahead and add the first portion, which is to take the rocket sprite's x value at this current time. So again, go back to your rocket sprite, and then we're going to go ahead and find the rocket sprite on the x value. Once you find your rocket sprite on your x value, go ahead and drop that in the first part of your block. And now what we have is our rocket sprite on the x value plus half of the rocket sprite's width. This can then be dropped into that call bullet rocket move to x value. Now, once you have dropped it into that x value, the next step is to go ahead and program the y value. The Y value is simply taking the rocket sprite on the Y axis and just subtracting 20 from that. So again, we'll grab a math block here. We'll grab a little subtraction block. And for the first part of this, we're gonna go ahead and find the rocket sprite on the Y. Now we can duplicate that rocket sprite on the X and just change our X value over to Y. Place that in the front half of that block. The next step is to go ahead and subtract 20. So we can duplicate that number two and then we can just go ahead and change that number two to a 20 and put that in the second half of the block. From here, you'll want to call that bullet rocket move to in that touched event handler. Make sure it's placed before you set the bullet's visibility to true, the speed to 30, and the heading to 90. The last thing we need to program is what happens when the bullet actually hits the saucer. We will use the bullet collide with event handler for this procedure. This event is called whenever the bullet collides with another sprite. Since our rocket sprite is locked into a Y at the bottom of the screen, the bullet will never collide with the rocket and only with the saucer. On collision, we want two things to happen. One, the score should be increased by one, and two, the bullet should become invisible. So let's head back over to our Space Invaders app and program our bullet collide with event handler. Now that we are back into our Space Invaders app, we're going to be programming this bullet rocket collide with behavior. The things that we're going to be looking at is making sure that that bullet rocket sprites visibility turns off when it hits the saucer. We'll also want to update the score as well as make sure that a sound plays if that saucer is hit. So in order to do this, we're going to go ahead and find our bullet rocket and we're going to find the collide with behavior. Once you bring in that event handler, the next step of this is to go ahead and set that bullet rocket's visibility back to false. And since we already have that in our screen one initialize, we're just gonna go ahead and duplicate that block and drop it into the collide with behavior. The next step is to take that label score update text and change that to plus one. So remember on our user interface, we've created this update label that's going to go ahead and update to show the score. The label that says score label is just going to remain the same. We just want that number zero to increment whenever the saucer is hit. So in order to do this, we're going to find the label score update. 
Once we find that score update label, we're gonna go ahead and find the text and we'll go ahead and set that text to update. Now, in order to get that to update, we're gonna to need to use an addition block. So we'll go ahead and find that addition block and attach it to that score update label. From here, we need to take whatever that score update label is and increase that by one. So we can do that by going back down to that score update label and we're gonna go down and find the light green box that says score update label text. We'll put that in the first part of that addition block. For the last part of that, we're gonna to need to call that to increase by one. So grab that zero block and go ahead and change that over to one. Now that should go ahead and update our score whenever the saucer is hit. For our next step, we wanna make sure that that saucer sprite is positioned correctly on the X value. So in order to do this, we're gonna find that saucer sprite and we're gonna go ahead and find the set saucer sprite to X value. We'll go ahead and place that in the collide with behavior. And from here, what we're gonna to need to do is we wanna select a random integer from zero to whatever half of the width is. So in order to do this, we need to go ahead and find a random integer block. We can find that in our math drawer. And when we find that random integer, it's gonna say from one to 100. Just go ahead and pull out that one and 100 for right now and drop that random integer block in. What we'll need to place in that first part is a zero. So we'll go ahead and change that one over to a zero and drop that into the first part of that block. The next part we need to grab a subtraction block. So go into your math drawer, find your subtraction block and bring that in. Now for the first part of your subtraction block, we're gonna go ahead and grab a canvas one width. So we wanna find out whatever the width is of that canvas. Go ahead and drag that into the first part of the subtraction block. And then we're gonna go ahead and subtract the width of the canvas from the width of our saucer sprite. So in our saucer sprite, we're gonna to need to go back down and find the width of that as well. Now, once we do that, we can go ahead and get rid of that 100. And we're gonna go ahead and take that subtraction block and drop that into the end of that random integer block. Now, from here, the last thing we need to do is get it to play sound if we actually hit the saucer. So we already have a play tone in here. And what we're gonna look for here is that hit saucer sound. Once we get that, we're gonna call the hit saucer sound to play if indeed the bullet does collide with the saucer sprite. Now that you've programmed the bullet rocket, we are now ready to test our app. Now it's time to go ahead and test our application. As you can see that if we drag that rocket from left to right, it still will drag along the screen. However, when we release that rocket, a bullet will be fired in an upward movement. What you will notice is that the bullet is getting stuck at the top edge of the screen. And that's something that we'll need to fix in the next part of our activity. Now, the other thing we want to see is what happens if we actually hit the saucer. In this case, what you'll notice is that the saucer was hit, it played a sound, and then it moved based off of the formula that we wrote. So now that we know that our score is updating, our rocket sprite is moving correctly, as well as the saucer sprite, we're now ready to move on to the next part of our application.